Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. And we have a Future Stars Market Talk video today. We're going to be talking about the market, talking about these loading screens and stuff that we see in here. Of course, uh, we've got a lot going on in this loading screen right here, but obviously that is Jao Felix, right? Atletico Madrid, 92 rated. The stats match what his card would be if you give his gold card, the 80 rated, a boost like they did for last year's Future Stars. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the loading screens today. We actually have had two loading screens. First day on Wednesday with some very, very interesting uh, numbers and letters thrown in as well. So we're going to take a look at that really quick and talk about that. Of course, look at the team of the week as well. And some of the new headliners uh, have got upgraded as well. So let's take a loading screens first and chat about this. Uh, this was the first loading screen that they put out today. They put this out at 6 p.m. UK saying, hey, headliners are going to start in two days. And they put this out with a 95 pace card. Now, is this Jao Felix? And is this loading screen that we literally just looked at Jao Felix? I don't think so. I think these are two separate cards. I don't think they would give Jao Felix 93 pace. That would be a massive pace boost. Uh, I feel like you should have 90 or 91 or maybe 92 pace, but... 95 pace, I think this is a different card. Of course, a lot of people have their suggestions on what this could be. Um, but if you look around the outsides as well, there's one that's hidden behind my face cam in the top right. But we have some numbers, right? And people have actually done, done the research. I think this is on Reddit. I'm not entirely sure. But these numbers right here are basically like uh, latitude and longitude coordinates for the places, the nationalities where some of these cards are going to come from. That's the little information I have about that. But supposedly, like, Martinelli is guaranteed to be in based on one of these coordinates. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. And then we have some letters up here as well, which people aren't really sure. At least I, as of right now, I'm not entirely sure what this is. There's a lot of R's. I thought it might say Troy Parrot at first, but there's only one R. So unless EA can't spell, I don't think it's going to be Troy Parrot. Although that'd be a cool future star to have. So that was the first loading screen. So we just get this 95 pace dropped in our face. We're like, what the heck? What are we going to do with this? A little bit later, they dropped this loading screen with the Zhao Felix card, which was, this one's probably going to be like the middle headline, the big boy of the promo. This is going to be the, the card that everybody's talking about. I think I said yesterday in my video that he might be around a million coins. He might even be more than that. With the stats that this card shows right here, that means that they are going to be juicing these cards. This card might be like 1.5 to 2 mil actually instead of 1 mil based on these stat boosts and what I see already from this card. So I'm super duper pumped about that. That's pretty cool. And then one other thing that I saw on Twitter today. By the way, shout out to Martin on Twitter. Mart10HD, another FIFA content creator, really cool guy on Twitter. He, t he tweeted a lot of these out and it, uh, I'm able to reference them for the video since I don't have my own screenshot. So thank you, my man. But here you see, I think it's like an Instagram story or a Snapchat story uh, from somebody doing a photo shoot. And what you can see here in the background is it looks like Tamori. That's definitely the Chelsea badge right there. Center back. It looks like it might be 88 or 89 rated. So it looks like Tamori is getting a Future Stars card as well. So that's kind of what we know from today. We have some coordinates on the, the loading screen. We had that kind of a leak, I guess you could say, of the Tamori card. And then, of course, we had the uh, the Zhao Felix and that 95 pace player as well. So when we look at a lot of predictions, which I showed a prediction on my video yesterday, um, there are a lot of these future stars players that when they get boosted, they will be very, very pacey. And that is what the cards looked like last year as well. Like remember the Vinicius, right? Uh, Vinicius had a ton of pace. Even if they give a guy like Rod uh, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, I'm not entirely sure how you say his name, but the uh, the Brazilian left wing from Real Madrid. If they give this guy a massive boost, he's going to have over 90 pace. Like it, it could be this card right here is the 95 pace card that we see on the loading screen, giving him like plus 10 boost in every category. Definitely not out of question um, for a lot of these future stars. As we looked at yesterday, the boost for these cards are pretty mental. So I would expect that we get more clues for these cards today around 6 p.m. UK. Uh, and again, it is Thursday. Happy Weekend League Rewards Day to you guys. If you have Weekend League Rewards, good luck. And uh, if you haven't opened your packs yet, with these kind of like leaks and kind of teasers that they're showing, maybe you save your packs until Friday. I think a lot of people are going to be doing that. It's not a ton of time to save packs, but this is Future Stars. And people know that uh, this is a huge, huge promo 
So there's probably going to be a decent amount of packs saved. Not that you can get a ton of packs from the store right now. You could do marquee matchups. We'll get a new set of those tomorrow. You could do uh, league SBCs and stuff like that. But um, I think a lot of people, and I would even recommend this. I, I always say, at this point of the year, why not save your packs? Have a little bit of fun. See if you can pack one of those big cards with whatever packs you can stack up uh, before the promo actually comes. One side note, we got an SBC today. Luka Jovic, player moments. Five-star weak foot, three-star skills, medium, medium. Uh, I felt, I think I tweeted this out today. EA felt like they had to give this guy a moments card uh, because his wants to watch has not done really anything this year. So this is uh, a player moments, Jovic, celebrating his five goals versus Dusseldorf in the Bundesliga. They can make a player moments card for literally anything. Like a lot of players, they could just say, oh, he scored five goals in one game. That's pretty cool, right? Not everybody has done that, but they can make almost anything up and make a player moments SBC out of it. So that's why we're seeing all these SBC cards this year, which is cool. GG's EA, thank you. They're giving us interesting players. Not that they're all really meta and usable, but to some people in this game of FIFA, these cards mean a ton to them. Somebody loves Loic Remy, somebody loves Luka Jovic, or somebody is a Real Madrid fan. And they, they want that card in their club. So even though to the majority of people on this game, this content and this card right here is nothing special, it's content, right? And I can appreciate that. Thank you, EA, for putting out special cards. So that's what I want to say about that. I like to think around the positive side of things in terms of some of the SBCs and the content that they have been putting out recently. Next thing I want to talk about is this new team of the week. And that is what we have right here. The team of the week came out today and it was... Kind of a kind of not nah, not up to par. Like it was just kind of average. We were hoping that we could get a Lewandowski. We were hoping for a Neymar and even a, poss a possible Mertens. And our best player, instead of getting any of those, was Insigne, which Insigne is still a pretty nice card. Left wing, nice GGs. Goretzka was really nice. Uh, uh, luckily, we did get two headliner upgrades. We got Ilicic upgrade and the Playa objective upgrade, and I'm going to show you guys those cards in a second. We're going to look at Playa on here, and then we'll look at Ilicic on the console, I think. But Playa got, obviously what they do with these is uh, Playa's headliner card was 86 rated. This was the exact card stats that that 86 had when it was in objectives as the headliner. So, of course, the headliner stays one upgrade above the next inform so his uh his headliner now becomes the 86 inform and the headliner moves one upgrade above which they gave him a decent amount of plus twos and stats that it mattered so we got plus two shot plus two passing and plus two pace not bad there and then uh, we'll just look at illicit here as well the 88 illicit of course has the same stats as his headliner and they hit the benchmark stats all of the benchmark stats that we wanted to see for this Illicic. They gave him the 80 pace. They gave him the 90 shot. They gave him the 90 passing. And of course, he did have above uh, the 90 dribbling as well. So that's really cool. This card right now is like 70K, I think. I think I bought one at 72. Um, a lot of times what you'll see, this card doesn't really have a ton of hype, but the upgrades on these cards are very interesting because sometimes you'll see a card that has a lot of hype, right? Let's say like that Lewandowski is due for an upgrade down the line. He gets an inform, but the the live item, the headliners card hasn't been upgraded yet. Sometimes what you'll see is a little bit of panic selling on those cards until they get upgraded. When people see the upgrades, if it's a meta card that a lot of people want to use and it wasn't invested in too much, then sometimes you see them drop for a little bit as people who have invested go to sell, but then you see a rebound afterwards. So I bought one of these right around 70K, I think, or 72, uh, just to see if this is a card that people might want to try out after rewards because I mean it did hit the new stat benchmarks a lot of people are going to want to try this card since they see the 80 pace if you look at his end games he just looks like an absolute poacher 95 shots 95 long shots 94 shot power um, of course long shots aren't really a thing in this game but uh, this guy looks like he can definitely put him in so if you have a Serie A team you're probably going to try this guy out um, and it just looks like a fun cool card to try out 70,000 coins so we'll see what happens maybe he goes up 10k Maybe he stays at the same price. Maybe I'll actually play up the card and have fun with him for once, you know? We'll, we'll maybe do something like that. But uh, that was kind of the movements on those cards today. Um, one thing I want to mention as well, really quick, we're going to talk about some of the, the investing points and stuff that I see or I saw from today's Team of the Week. This Team of the Week to me looks a lot like SBC fodder and kind of like filler cards. Filler cards in a team of the week, except for Goretzka. Goretzka could get into a lot of people's teams. Insigne could get into a couple. 
Donnarumma and Ricardo Pereira are like the, the main guys that you would put into a team from this team of the week. This Ricardo Pereira card really interested me today because he's 170,000 coins. What's he going to go to with rewards? Probably like 150. Although if you're somebody who got elite, I might save my team of the week pack. If you can at all hold on and conserve and constrain yourself, hold on to your team of the week packs because this is just not the week to open a team of the week pack when... The most expensive team of the week player is like 220k. I know Goretzka right now is extinct at 190. I believe it's 190. He's extinct at 190, but this card probably shouldn't be too much more than like 250. Uh, maybe 300k. I feel like 300k would be a bit too much. This is the live item at 700, so maybe like 300k max or like 250-ish for this card. 220, 230 maybe. Um, but yeah, the most expensive out of this team of the week is, is that. And then you have all these other lower tier fodder guys. If you open up one of those elite packs, please, if you have a team of the week pack, I would save it. Um, I would I would definitely save it. But there's a lot of fodder in this, and that's what I really want to get at. Mollet, to me, looks like an unbelievable fodder investment. Nacho Fernandez looks like an unbelievable SBC investment as well. Guerrero is a full send for me too. And Acherby. These guys look like great SBC fodder investments. Buy one, chuck it in the club. I've used this guy as an example uh, a little bit in the past. I think I talked about him earlier this weekend. SBC fodder cards that aren't really usable in game, like this Payet card. Look what happens over the course of a couple months, right? This is like two months ago. Payet goes from 13K as an 84 rated left wing in form. Uh, and that was on November 18th. He's 13,000 coins. What is he at on December 18th? He is 22K. So he goes up 10,000 coins in a month. That's that's a really solid return. If you have anywhere around like 500,000 coins, you can buy one one of each of the team of the weeks that are like 82 or especially like the 83s, the 84s, and the 85s with all the player SBCs that we get. And they're probably going to keep coming. Just put one in the club, chuck it in the club. And you know, the one thing about EA is they're going to continue putting out EA, uh, SBCs during this promo and during the promos in the future, right? So stock the club with them. And uh, you could see a rise like that as we as we get on later into the year. I want to also mention that I think part of the rise on a guy like Dimitri Payet like this is we haven't had a Team of the Week SBC that has given out past Team of the Weeks for a long time. And that's something that maybe we see this weekend with Future Stars if they really want to make a big coin stuck out of it. But I would have also thought that if we were going to get a Team of the Week SBC, they would have put some better guys into the actual Team of the Week to make people actually want to go out and do that SBC. So again, it's rewards day on the market is Thursday. Will we see some uh, rewards flipping investments? Will you be able to trade with week and league rewards today? This is a lot of the stuff that I've been trading with over the past couple days. Just a lot of special cards and stuff that I've found deals on messing around with. Um, made some decent amount of coins on that. Will the market go up with rewards? I'm probably going to buy a few things. I bought some Ricardo Pereira's today, the first in form. Uh, right when that in the second inform was released into packs, this guy was down to like 64k in the panic selling because people saw that his new inform was coming out. Wow, he's already back down. So he got bought back up to 70, and now he's back down at 65. This is an interesting. This is very very interesting. I'm gonna see if I can hop on some open bids, and that's what I would recommend for you guys as well. If you're watching this before rewards, see if you can get on some open bids um, for any prem meta usable out of packs informs other specials stuff like that our usual stuff right if it's a card that normally goes up on a thursday this is your time to be looking at it and just and uh just seeing if you can get any open bids right because the open bids are key especially on these types of weeks in the market when there's just not a ton that really makes it look like it's going to rise i mean sterling was sterling this card right here was 130 last week at this time so him being at 140 right now Maybe if I can snag a bid at 130 or under, that would be a nice little flip tomorrow if I can sell him at like 145 to 150. Even if he only goes up 10,000 coins, uh, getting on the late night bids, which is very, very profitable at this time of the day, a couple hours before rewards, is something that you guys can definitely do. Now, I'm just looking at Sterling as an example, not saying that you should go out and buy him, but I'm just looking at this card as an example right now. How much is this guy? Wow, is he really like 140? Is he actually 140? Because this Sterling left wing has really been hurt That uh, thanks to the new one that has come out, the headliner Sterling. Yeah, he's still around 150, so I'm not entirely sure if I like this as an investment. It didn't do well for me last week, and I'm not sure if it's going to do well again this week. But 
that's just something to think about. Find some of those prem cards. Um, again, the informs, the scream cards, stuff like that. And you don't even have to look at the prem, man. Like, there's a lot of Syria in this week's team of the week. Maybe there's some Syria guys like a nine golan, right? Maybe this is somebody that you look at this week's special nine golan. That's an updated player face, by the way. That's a new. That's a new player face for nine golan. Nine golan is seventy thousand coins with a shadow. You know what? I'm gonna check this right now. Where's the next cheapest one with a shadow? Is it above eighty k? If it is, then I might snag. Seventy five and seventy eight thousand coins. What does this guy usually go to on a Thursday? Let me check. Because this is the type of card that you could put your coins into, uh, especially if you can get one on bid. And again, with the chem styles, it's massive as well. So he was 77K. What does he do on the daily? I'll take you guys over to flip in with me to look. Wow. So look, 78 to 71. Now that might not be with the shadow, but it looks like, it looks like right over here, you know, 71K is not bad. 75K is not bad. I'll let that sit and see if he gets undercut and try to cash out on an open bid or two. But maybe you look at some Serie A players, Ro Magnoli, you know, something like that. So maybe look at Serie A. Again, just any meta informs, cards that people want to use for their team that could get bought up a little bit. There's still, we look at the low range, right? And again, if you're looking for some cards to flip, keep it on the low range because a lot of stuff like this, people with not a ton of coins in this game, they're not as affected by all the promos, right? I think people in FIFA might be starting to get numb to the loading screens. And that's something that we're probably going to continue to talk about um, over just the life of this game and what we see in the next uh, couple weeks on FIFA with all the promos. But people might starting to be getting a little bit numb to the promos and knowing, okay, I got to buy my team on Thursday or got to buy my team on Wednesday or whatever it is before the promo and then, and then sell it on Saturday or whatever. But um, people just kind of maybe gotten into that. They just gotten used to it. So we'll, we'll kind of have to see if the market goes up tomorrow. Last couple of weeks when we've had promos, the market has actually gone up. So that is nice to know that some people are buying in this market, even when we have promos coming up. But that's why we stick to the lower tier budget and stuff like that. Again, I don't see a ton of stuff going like crazy high tomorrow just because of the promo coming. I think a lot of people are going to save packs. So that'll also make the market stagnate a little bit. And then you might see some more panic selling based on what we see with the loading screens that are released and whatever content they put out tomorrow. I wouldn't expect a ton of content. We'll see. But um, Friday is a big day. We're going to talk about that a lot tomorrow. We've got a new season coming with new icon swaps. We're going to find out a lot about icon swaps. And we're going to have a future stars. And by the way, I think it was leaked on Reddit that there's going to be this future stars is going to be another two week promo. This is going to be another two week promo. I don't know if it's going to be the week and a half, kind of like headliners was, but there's going to be two sets. So that is what I have heard through the grapevine and seen some things on Reddit. Um, if you can be believe Reddit in its full form, because Reddit is its own animal. I don't mess. I don't mess around a lot with Reddit. It's crazy out there. It's crazy over there. So that's what Reddit said about uh, future stars that it might be two different weeks. So that'll be interesting. That kind of seems like their new thing this year, of course. We've seen that with plenty of other promos uh, and stuff like that this year. So again, we'll be looking at all the market stuff that happens today and tomorrow. Good luck with your weekend league rewards. And if you're going in on some Thursday flips before rewards happen, get on those open bids and good luck with that. Other than that, I would say you might want to get decently liquid heading into this promo because... A lot of people are going to sell stuff once they see these cards come out based on what the uh, stats they've shown in the loading screens have looked like so far. It looks like they're going to juice these cards again and make them look insanely good just like last year during Future Stars. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button on it. I would greatly appreciate it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It's been Nate the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace out. <music>